Welcome to Book Cuddle. I'm your host, Karen Reeder. I am so thrilled. Today I am joined by David La Rochelle. I met David at a conference just a couple months ago and I fell in love with the books. I wanted to buy every one of them, but I only allowed myself to buy one of every author's book at the conference. And so I've been reading this book since then. And at work, the other preschool teachers, I went and was telling them how excited I was and wanted just barely bought, go and get with Rex. So this is just, it's perfect. I think like the ideal audience is probably early childhood, like pre-K through third, would you say, David? Yes. Yep, exactly. Okay, perfect. And when I read it, though, um, like this one, How to Apologize, I did read it to my whole family. And even my 11 and 14-year-old were smiling and getting into it. So I think the humor is there that the older kids can enjoy it, too. We need that book, Karen. I remind myself all the times about things that I put in that book about how to apologize. As adults, we're not very good at it. Or at least I'm not. No, it's okay. It's so true. I have referred to it so many times since then. So let's start off just right away by talking about how to apologize because we caught on it. So how to apologize. This is one of the things we asked at the conference was how did you go about writing a book on a lesson that's teaching a lesson? Yeah. Well, I, as I'm sure you know, Karen, the number one rule for writing children's books is don't write a didactic book. Nobody wants to see that. And I Boring. always say, can you think of a more didactic title than How to Apologize? I mean, what kid would want to read a book called How to Apologize? Right. Um, but as I was jotting down these uh, short snippets about how to apologize, right. And I got the basic idea. I was seeing a, a counselor and he said, David, when you apologize, say you're sorry for what you did. Right. If possible, try and fix the mistake. Yes. Simple. And <laughs> after he told me that, I started listening to people apologize and I realized how bad we are. Right. Um, I know for me, I always want to make excuses. I'm sorry, but yes. such and such happened. So it's not really my fault. Yes. Yes. Um, years ago, one of my, uh, I was in a leadership position and he had us read this article and it was called no excuse, sir. And this drill sergeant would, um, in the story would say, I don't want to hear your excuses, your, um, response. Whenever I correct you, no excuse, sir. It just, it doesn't matter. You apologize and that's it. There are no excuses. There's only the apology. And we get so caught up in the excuses, right? Or to justify, to justify yep. what happened. And really, the person doesn't need, sometimes maybe they want might want an understanding. Maybe that might help. But what they need is sincerity. And yes. I like the simplicity in that, in the book. And the and I love, I love that it's just, it's so silly with the pictures. And when I was coming up with the ideas uh, for each of the separate rules, I was trying to imagine what would be a, a silly scenario to go with it. I knew I, from the start that it had to be a funny book. Yes. If, if one would want to read it. Um, and I'm lucky that for this book, I've been working with my good friend, Mike Winutka. We've done several books together. And I just knew how he would handle these animals. He has such an expressive way of, of handling animals and uh, the humor and the expression on the faces of the animals does so much for this book. Yes, absolutely. So when when you write, what what do you do as the author to say what you want? Do you, is there just text or do you have a little bit of this is what I'm hoping with this picture? How much freedom does the illustrator have? Well, it depends on the book. Uh, for a lot of the books that I write, I just type up the text, and that is what I send to the editor. Nice. Uh, with a number of other books, uh, and some of the ones I've done with Mike, I will actually, I don't know if you can see that. Yes. Or not, see the cat. I see the cat. I put together a little dummy that actually has some of the images in there. You can see those or not. Yeah, yeah. And so, and I just was barely reading See the Cat. And these are pretty true to what he did. He just touched up the illustration with his own um, unique characteristics, you know, a little bit of this and that. But it looks very true to what you were thinking. 
the the action is the same, but Mike can again with his use of color, with his use yes. of expression, he gives him a personality. Yes, that that's exactly have. what I was thinking. His personality. No. And I could never do that. And I know that that's his gift. Bring it to life. So, and we talk about lots of times uh, authors and illustrators never even meet, never talk. Each right. Other. right. You know that. But Mike and I are in the same writing group. So that's of course great. We're talking together and he gives me ideas for the story and I give him ideas for the illustration. And we always tell ourselves, um, no matter who gets credit for it, what's the important thing is that it makes it a better book. Yes, absolutely. So when I loved, um, you were telling us at this conference, this this book, Moo, where it's like the only word is Moo with the exception of Ba, right? Yes. And so um, this, it's just hilarious. And and is that one's by Mike as well, right? That he said- Yes, it's the, the first book that we did together. Uh, so fun. And you said somebody, what is it? What did they say? That I hope that- um, about pay or actually it was mike's uncle okay his uncle said well i hope you got paid more than the author for that book <laughs> because just as you said on every page it's just moo or a variation on the word right moo. right so the whole book is about intonation and expression and oh well, if i'm on the page here so just more and these context clues of the pictures, right? And how important that is. And that is so much what we're teaching. So I just barely did, and it's probably here in my file. Yeah, actually I have it right here because I just barely did this with my preschool students. I did dude and very, very similar. It's just almost the whole book. It's just dude. And, um, but I'm sure you had with that one, did you have more of a storyline? Obviously you didn't just say moo, moo, moo. And then you were like, go at it. Right. <laughs> you had more of a storyline. And I did the same thing. I made a dummy of the book like oh, this perfect. that showed what the cow was doing. Um, but it's, it's just amazing what Mike does, even though I might have the character doing things. One thing he pointed out to me for this book, every scene, the sky is a little bit different color and oh. it reflects the cow's emotions, like when she's really angry, it might be more kind of a red sky, when she's wow. sad. You know, and that's something that I didn't notice until it was pointed out to me. But yeah, those, I didn't notice they, that. Yeah, they make a huge difference. Oh, that is awesome. And that's so great to like hear these tidbits and then to be able to point these out to when we're reading to children because books can be read so many more times. So at the school I work at, um, we have, you know, a book that goes with each lesson. And for me, one book is never enough in a day. Like I, I, I need a lot of books. So I, I go and I pick my one and then I'll pick another one that's similar to whatever the lesson is. And then I'll pick some more fun ones. And um, so I just, I know I've got to have a lot of books and sometimes I'm like, oh, is this one? I don't remember. Is this book going to come up later? And it's like, it doesn't matter because there's so much you can still get out of a book and a child can still love a book so much. Like you were saying, you could point out new things like this color of the sky that they might not have noticed the first time. That's really neat. That's, that's the um, wonderful thing about good teachers and good librarians because they know how to read a book and they yes. can ask different questions the time around and they can point out something and they can ask the, the child's opinion. You know, what do you think is actually happening here? What do you think the the cow meant when she said bah at the end of the story? And right. you know, so, so much that a good uh, teacher, librarian, adult can yes. do with a book. Absolutely. All right. So your newest book coming out, this, this Fox, do you have that? Because I, I know I don't because it's not available for another couple of weeks, I think. Yes, I got my author copies, I think, three days ago. And always an exciting, exciting thing. I bet and that's so great just to open the box and see that all put together. So mm -hmm. you you read this to us and put this up on the slides while we were there. And I, I just fell in love with it because it's such a fun, like loud, interactive, silly book. So tell me about creating Mr. Fox's Game of No. Um, well, I'm recently with a lot of my books, I've been thinking about how to make them a more interactive. 
Yes. Um, and go and get with Rex would be an example of an interactive game because you could predict what's going to happen next. And that was actually ba based on a real game I invented for some friends. The, and, you guys were doing that game over Zoom, right? Yes. When our game night group couldn't meet in person, we had to think of games we could do uh, over Zoom. And this alphabetical scavenger hunt is something I came up with. And I thought, well, that might make a book. And sure That's enough. That's so perfect. I love it. Um, and I'd also been thinking of a, uh, a book that would be like a real game where you'd read a page and might say, go ahead, three spaces, right. or answer this question. And if you get it right, you can go ahead or you go back. And yes. this has a little bit of the going back element yes. to be sent to the back of the book. Yeah. And I, I can't wait to do it. Um, and I love, let's see, is this the one that the you would hold up the sign that the kids would say this on this side of the room and th that on the other side of the room or is that go and get that was go and get with rex okay so but there's just so many fun things like you were saying that you make it interactive that you can bring the kids into the story should i read the first couple of pages for the oh the, i would you? love that i would absolutely okay, now you've heard the book so pretend you haven't heard okay. the book deal i'll just read the first couple of pages and I'll show you at least the first page of Mike's artwork there. I love the colors and the detail. That's beautiful. And just seeing how he brought that personality of the fox. Right? To yes. He nailed it for me, the slyness of the fox. Yes. A couple pages go like this. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Step right up for a battle of wits and test your brain with my nearly impossible game of no. Here's how it works. Every time I ask a question, you have to say no. If you accidentally say yes, then you have to go all the way back to the beginning of this book and start over. Are you ready to play? Yes. Oops, did you say yes? <gasps> if you did, then go back to the beginning and try again. So then you could read again. I'll just do one more page. Uh, yum, look what was just delivered. A giant strawberry sundae with whipped cream, sprinkles, and three enormous chocolate-covered cherries. Oh, it smells scrumptious. Would you like a taste? No. <laughs> well, that's too bad. I guess I'll have to eat it all myself. And <laughs> Mr. Fox does. Oh, I love it. I love, I love the pictures. I love that the kids, you know, they already got in trouble for saying yes. And so they don't want to go back and have it done over because I, I would just love to do that with the kids. Be like, oh, start, sorry, sorry, we got to start the book over now. <laughs> See how it's many very, times we do that. It's a fun book to read out loud. I, I I haven't read the actual book, but I've read the slides before and I have a lot of fun reading it. So um, I hope librarians and teachers will have fun reading it too. I think it's got the perfect read lot. I think that is just describes your book so well. Like, is it is it a hundred, the dragons? The mighty dragons all named broccoli. All named broccoli. And um, then our apology one, the see the cat and see the dog. Um, these just make incredible read alouds. So when, when you create these, do you... Are you, your voice that you're doing that in, do you practice as you're writing it? Do you practice out loud with yourself? I'm definitely reading the book out loud as I go along. And I know a lot of authors, especially a lot of picture book authors do that. Because as you well know, picture books are often meant to be read out loud. Yes, uh, absolutely. All right, that is really fun. I did not know. I never pictured a picture book author sitting there saying the stuff out loud. I pictured them with their pad or their computer, but that's awesome to hear that you sit there and out loud say what you're writing. Over that's and amazing. over and over again, because you want it to go smoothly and yes. it, it has to be easy, easy to read. Trip off your tongue smoothly. Yes. Yeah. So fun. So then let me ask you, do you ever second guess yourself after you've said that so many times does it ever get like oh but is this the right word because just hearing that wording so many times i would start to worry and it's very easy to read your own story to make it sound the way you want it to sound right so that is the the benefit one of the many benefits of having a critique group a writing group and then we meet Many times I will have somebody else in the group read the story. Good. And 
if they can't read it the way I want it to be read, I know I didn't write it the, the right way. That's good. And that's always interesting to hear a different personality because sometimes that's fun for me that when there's a picture book that I read a lot to my children and then to hear my husband read it, I'm like, is that how it goes? Because I thought it went like this. And Moo is a great example. Yes. Of this. I've heard so many different people read this Moo and and they read it all different ways. And it's right. very fun for me to hear that. And they make it work. It works for them. Yes. And I love that to bring your own personality that you get to take the words and you get to take the pictures and then make it your own with those who you're reading to. Exactly. My uh, friend of mine, an excellent, excellent picture book writer, Phyllis Root, uh, once said that picture books are a performance piece. That's what yes. you think of when you're creating it. And, that, and that's what they are. They're meant to be performed. Yes. I love when I read to my kids at night, sometimes, you know, it's the end of the night and I'm tired. And so I'm sitting down. And so what they'll ask for is preschool style, which means I'm supposed to stand up and perform and walk around <laughs> while I read the book. Very cool. Uh, it's not a fair question to ask you, Karen, but do you have a favorite read aloud book um, that's your go-to read aloud book? And one that maybe just gives you pleasure reading it out loud. Absolutely. So I love... Definitely Mo Willems. We love the pigeon and the Gerald and Piggy. And especially because I love to shout. I love to get into it and throw my arms around and just get all animated. Do not push the button um, or that dude book. Anything where I can get animated. My family's favorite that they'll have me read over and over again is the book with no pictures. And we have a version of um, my book with no pictures that he, um, BJ Novak, left us spaces to create our own silly words. I haven't seen that one. That so, one's yeah, cool. they, they think that's a hoot and they will laugh every single time. At that. <laughs> so that's always fun. So Are tell you, me then, did you have a favorite, what was your favorite creating Oh, favorite creating. Um, boy, uh, I really liked creating Moo. Yes. Because I started, my whole idea was I was going to take one single word and think of all the different ways that I could write it. Uh, think of the different types of punctuation that could go with it to make it sound different ways. Yes. And then try and figure out a storyline that would put all of those different ways together. So it's like a big puzzle and I really like puzzles. So, so did you pick Moo first? I did. You um, picked, like you picked that word and went from there. Yes. And then I wrote Moo. I remember the notebook. I wrote Moo with a question mark, Moo with a period and Moo with an exclamation mark. And that those punctuation marks completely change the meaning of the word. Um, and then I started, you know, big capital letters, long stretched out Moo, and then trying to think of a storyline, how they could all fit together. That's so fun. And I loved how Mike had the Moo going up and down the hills. And that's yeah. so fun. <laughs> I, um, and I think that's so perfect that you can take so many things like, okay, we're going to do a lesson on punctuation. So pull out something simple and show how putting punctuation differently will change the meaning of the same word. So mm -hmm. another powerful teaching tool. And we've had heard so many nice stories about that book. Uh, a lot of stories about this is the first book a child can read on their own, a preschooler, yes. because yes. If they say Moo, and then they felt like they've read a real book. Which yeah, I they think. have. Yes, absolutely. The that is powerful. Book. That is so powerful for a child to feel like they've read a book. And another thing that we've heard that makes me feel so good is we've heard a number of stories about how English language learners who are in a classroom who can't, are so new, they can't understand anything that's going on, but they can understand the word moo, that book. And they are on the, in on the joke with their classmates. And it makes them feel so good that they can understand the story just as easily as their classmates. So that's been fun to hear about. Oh my gosh. I didn't even think about that. That is, that is amazing. That that's touching. That's just yeah. heartwarming right there to just think of those kids that are like lost in a sea of language, perhaps, you know, yeah. in a new situation yeah. and then to be able to have connection just in that story time moment. I love that. A kindergarten to teacher told me that she had a, um, 
a boy from China in her class who had never spoken any English in the class and she and the teacher would read Mu several times. One day she didn't bring the book Mu and her the boy's first sentence was, where is his Mu book? So. <laughs> I love it. Oh, look at the difference you're making right there. That's oh, that that's just my favorite moments to yeah. hear about for yeah. authors. Do you have do you have anything else like that that's just one of some of your favorite moments as an author? Um, just hearing that makes me want to just makes me want to hear more. Yeah, it's um, so amazing to me, Karen, that I will go to conferences like the one you and I were at, right. and these librarians will come up to me and and tell me how they use my books or how it's like. Right. See, Cat has made um, been the first book that a student could read or something like that. And when I'm writing these books, I'm all by myself in my studio here in my yes. townhouse. And these books go out and they have their own life, things that they have experiences I would have never dreamed they would have had. And it makes me, tickles me so much that something I made is going out in the world and having its own life. So. That's so fantastic. All right. So on these librarians, you told me before we recorded, tell us about Max. You've got sitting there, this big plush Max. Tell us about him. Well, Max comes from the book. See the cat? Yes. Three stories about a dog. Uh, and this ended up being the first of three books in a beginning reader series that Mike and I did together. We didn't think it was going to be a series. We never had that in mind, but it ended up being. Max, right over there, was a gift to me from my amazing friend, librarian Kim Farrow. And she made a stuffed Max like this that looks exactly like the character in the book. Yes. She made one for me. And then she made one for Mike as well. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. I love the eyes too. That just so, so him. Yeah. And I don't know, I can't imagine taking a flat piece of painting and then turning into yes. a dimensional piece of art. Um, the nice. first thing that we ever got from Kim was when our book Moo came out and we were doing our book sign, our book yes. launch at the bookstore. And we we're at the bookstore getting ready. And then all of a sudden, this remote, small remote, remote control car comes in with a small stuffed cow that looks just like the cow in it. And it drives in. And she put together a remote control car and a stuffed cow for both Mike and I. Oh, I just love it. That just makes my day. Oh, She's an amazing, so amazing woman, Kim Furrow. So all these amazing things that we can do, like past books, whether this is you as the author, and then we've got the illustrator, we've got librarians and teachers and taking these books and just making more than reading words. I love it. This is so inspiring. And I, I feel like this is the th theme of our video right there is, you know, more taking more than just words from a book. David, I love to ask all of my guests, what is one of your favorite books Besides your own, a favorite children's book besides your own brilliant work. Um, I thought about that a little bit, Karen, and that's a, again a, not a fair question. I, I know, I know. I listed like six mm -hmm. when you asked me, right? And that's the first time somebody's asked me beforehand. <laughs> well, that was a very, a very, very interesting to find that out. And then I, I knew all the ones you mentioned, but sometimes you can learn new books that yes. way. Yes. So uh, I narrowed it down to two. So I couldn't go to one. And there's a lot of other ones I want to talk about, but I picked two, okay. uh, a newer one and an older one. Perfect. And older one, about 20 years old, Rattletrap Car. And it's by the woman I mentioned before, Phyllis Root. Well, I love the title. Yes. And uh, illustrated by Jill Barton. Right. And story is this family is going to the lake in their old rattle trap car and it keeps falling apart. And the people, the kids in the family keep adding different things onto the car to it keep it going. It looks like a, a beach ball for a wheel there. And that's fun. And every time they add something, it makes the, adds another noise to the um, list of noises the car makes. So here is towards the end. And this is one that I, Literally, I will pull off the shelf and read it to myself because I have so much fun reading this out oh, loud. So fun. So here's part of it goes, Papa turned the key. Brum, 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 brum. Fizzly, sizzly, whippity, bappity, lumpity, bumpity, clickety, clanky, bing, bang, pop. They were off to the lake in their rattle trap car. They didn't go fast and they didn't go far when thunk it a 
thump, the engine fell off. So then they put something on and that makes another noise to that whole list of noises there. Oh, that sounds perfect for me to add to just my pull out for entertaining them when I just need a, when there's so much noise, that is the perfect solution is to entertain with a book. Yeah. And then the the kids can pick up on the refrain so they can yes. be singing with you as yes. well. Too. So that one's about 20 years old. And this one came out just this year. I wonder if you've seen it. C.C. Bell's Animal Albums. I've heard about it, but I haven't read it because I'm familiar with C.C. Bell, but I haven't. Yeah, sure. El Defo, we all know her yes. for that. Book. Yes. But, and isn't she, is she, um, yeah, 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 yeah. These are my favorites. The I Am a Donkey and You Loves You. Yeah. Yep. Yep. For this book, it's actually an alphabet book. And for each letter of the alphabet, Cece has invented a record album. And each record album, the animal who's made the album starts with the letter D. In this okay. case, it's uh, Dodo's. The music for each letter is the type of music that begins with. So this is disco music. Nice. The um, there's all these different songs on the album. There's different artwork that you're probably too young, but brings back these memories of the uh, albums covers that I saw for my sister growing up. Yes. There's the lyrics to one of the songs. All on right. The page, and you can literally online, she has recorded, friends recorded the music for each of these songs. Oh so my gosh. And she's created about five music videos. So How fun. And then the end pages have memorabilia from these animal musicians. And at the very end, I don't know if I can find it, but she has uh, written a, what is it? Here we go. About the artist, about the animal artist. So this is where their animals are today. Um, like some of them broken up in their group and they're no longer yeah. together. Um, some of them now are just performing at county fairs. Uh, some of them went back to the farm and all that. So each one tells you what the animal now is doing after they recorded their album. Oh, I love it. That is so unique. And I cannot imagine how much time that took her. That's exactly what I asked her because not only all, and it's all hand done, no computer art, hand lettering, wow. everything. That's and incredible. With the video. She, she's the her own. Oh, okay. Is she her own illustrator? Yes. Yes. And I was picking up one of her other books. That's why a bunch of stuff fell. I'm sorry. I didn't realize she was the illustrator as well. Wow. And, wow. and with the lettering as well, too. That amazes me. So I asked her, I said, Gorgeous. Wow, that must have taken you a long, long time. And yeah. she said this was a uh, a pandemic book. So ah. she had more time to work on this one uh, than some other books. But I'm my fingers are crossed that that will be recognized in some way for illustrative work or award later this year because it's yeah. so far my one of my very top favorite picture books of the year yeah that is incredible those are just besides just all the labor it's beautiful i love it and just as we were talking about for before you can use this book in so many so ways so many ways yes yes Poetry, across so music. many different content areas absolutely yeah. well thank you for showing it to me i i know somebody else had mentioned it briefly but um I didn't remember it until you showed me. I'm definitely going to have to get that one for my for my household because yeah. I I have a family of performers that are in theater, so I can mm -hmm. imagine that being a lot of fun. Yes, so. they, and they could do a performance for one of the songs. That I'm sure they could come up with music. Absolutely, for them. that is something a theater group could use. You know, one of their little warm up things. They could pull out that book and be like, "All right, this group does this. This group has this animal. Go." There's the teacher, the librarian, Karen, coming up with ways to use it. Yes, up. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much, David. I, I love hearing about your work. Thank you for your recommendations. And I will include in the description under the YouTube videos where you can find David and his books. We'll make a whole list because we did not even touch on all of the awesome books that he has. Thank you, Karen, for asking me to be part of this. It was a delight for me. Talking about picture books, man, I could do that all night. Right? That's that's my joy in life. <laughs>